Keep going. And five, three, four, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Here's the Thing. I'm Kev on stage. She's that chick AJ. Podcast episode. Personally, banging on you guys. Right now, first things first, before we get in, last week edition show of the year. Get your tickets now. Teddy Ray, uh, Naeem Lynn, Kevin Hart's Plastic Cup Boys, Kevin Tate, Sean Larkins, comedian Ty Davis, and Clayton Thomas. Kev on stage. And there is someone I Chris Spencer. Chris Spencer is no longer on the show. Oh, he, somebody got sick in his family. Doug Williams. Oh, good. Job. Doug Williams. It's Hi. uh the biggest show. It is stacked. The lineup is crazy. It is twelve dollars. All proceeds will go to Kevin on Stage Studios. Sound Stage Studios. Yeah. The yeah. Office. That's like, I only, if you're not on Patreon, you only saw the soundstage part of it. We actually have offices as well. Uh, yeah. Patreon saw the full um, thing. Shout out to them. They're watching live. All right. Big boom, boom, boom. You guys comment, 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 account. Okay. So, um, nothing Question. crazy for you. You get to watch Keep Your Distance. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Angel. What volume of Keep Your Distance is this? This is volume 10. Woo! Volume 10. So nothing changes for you. I just want you to know where your money is going this time. It is literally going into uh, the creation of black content. We are producing our own content. We are getting ready to produce Angel's uh, show. Um, yeah. We are producing all kinds of shows and apps. So if you want to see different content from other people than uh, you know traditional Hollywood, you can help fund it, and you get to laugh in exchange. It's really a good trade-off here. Uh, Patreon, you know the cash app. If you guys want to bless that way, uh, I don't really want to put that out to the whole world. And Patreon, I'm going to change my cash app after this year, so you're not going to not just send me money anymore. Uh, so once this campaign is over, that's over. Okay. Okay. Here is the thing. Shouts to Joshi, new house alert, young homeowner. Um, homeowner. He is a man. He is gonna kiss girls there, and no one can stop him. He's gonna oh, say, "Make me breakfast and kiss me," and they will say, oh, "Okay, I love you, Josh." <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you like uh, it? <laughs> speaking of women, Joshi, uh, this clip went viral right after we shot our bonus episode. Um, it's best if you just hear this man speak to this woman this way. So allow me to share my screen. Can you guys see it? Uh, uh, there, I don't know. Isn't that the thing? Can you see it? Can everybody see the screen okay? Can you hear it? All right. Patreon, forgive me. There's going to be cussing. Josh will edit it for the main video. Let me start it over. And here goes rudeness. I honestly want a six-figure guy um, is what I'm realizing. Okay. And ma'am, and that's my point. You ladies all feel like, listen, you ladies all feel like you're the exception to the rule. And then when someone like myself comes along and gives you a, a dose of reality, instead of just accepting it, it's like, yeah, but, yeah, but I'm special. You don't know any men on this level that are not your father, that aren't related to you. That means you don't know these men. You don't know where to go get them. You don't know what they want. But you're still saying, pick me. They don't want mid 30 year old baby mamas are trying to be polite man but they don't want those can i ask you a question did you hear what i said yes why is that so okay go ahead why is it so what is go ahead um my from my point of view i feel like i, I get what you're saying that they, they, they do have better options but also those better options are younger girls those younger girls don't necessarily are necessarily 20 year olds are not necessarily attracted to 45 year olds i'm 51 and I, and I can't beat them off with a stick that's another one on you lies no younger women are always younger women are attracted to the older men what are you talking about so can you see me Yes, Ooh, I can. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Okay. 
So do you feel like a woman like me? Uh huh. What would you rank yourself on a scale from oh, one to ten? Lord. You cannot use seven. Would I rate myself? Mm, just your face. Um, my face when I wake up five, but when I put myself together six. Oh, Jesus. okay. And how tall are you? Five five. Dress size. I'm sorry. Your dress size. A three. Okay, so that makes you. If you give yourself a five, that's average. Yes. So average looking women tend not to get high earning men. They tend to get average men. <laughs> so um, did you did you I mean stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Breathe and digest. <laughs> You're 35 years old. And you can look around and see the world. You don't tend to see higher earning men with average looking women off rip. If you do see them, they got them, they got their average looking woman when they were both really young and he built his way up. But a man earning the kind of money you're talking about does not go for an average looking woman. I mean, my body is not average, so. But you're, ma'am, you please don't make me say it. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I really just wanted some advice. I love your you, I'm giving you. I'm giving you advice, but you're not taking it. The I'm, advice is, ma'am, ma'am, you're average looking at best. Oh, Jesus. I'm taking it in, but. Okay, but you're not accepting the fact that, okay. Average looking women. Oh, no. Average looking woman who's older. Average looking older woman with a 13 year old son. Oh, leave Make her alone. Stop. Make it stop. With a 13 year old son with a sketchy baby daddy. Oh, you don't know that. This gets worse every time I say something. And now you're asking for a man who's in the top 10% of men. You don't qualify for one. Jesus. And you're making I mean I don't I don't want to have to go there. No. But when you put in the, all these other factors, why can't you just get a man that's an average guy? Okay, okay. I I can't take no more. Okay, if you mm -hmm. want to get the rest go on World Star Hip Hop. So, I thought he was just like, "Oh, he's just rude to women." Uh then somebody somebody sent me this. He's just rude. Uh, let me pull this up for you guys. Uh, here we go. Huh? You you got a big dick? Huh? You have a big dick? I mean, it's above average. I ain't no Ron no, Jeremy. No, 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 no. I asked you if you had a big dick. I just said it was above average. I don't know what that is, really. Uh, nigga, you know if you got a big dick or not. Stop the bullshit. <laughs> Every dude know whether or not he got a big dick. I know I got a big dick. You don't know? I mean, you don't have a big dick. That's the point. You don't have a big dick. You don't have a big wallet. You a bit. You a fat dude. But you got a lot of nerve thinking you should get choosing centers in five foot ten and three hundred pounds, making less than a thousand dollars a month at twenty years old. And women should approach you. What they get? They don't even get a big dick. <laughs> Angel, <laughs> Angel, what? Oh. Oh. As the resident black woman on our illustrious show, let's let, let's start with the the first clip. What were your walk me through your thoughts? Oh Jesus! What I thought was he didn't have to be that mean. He didn't have to be that rude. Now. Will I say, was there some pieces of validity in what he was saying? Listen, I have to tell my friends that are getting closer to my age that they can't date like they're in their 20s. I have to tell them that. I'm like, you cannot date. You can't be having this list that's stacked up as if you are this 20-year-old hopping. I'm not saying they have to settle. But like to tell this woman that she's average at best, why do that? The first when she said when she rated herself as a five, I said, "Come on, now, 
And first of all, you can't take seven. That was the rudest thing. Taking seven off of the right. rating scale? You can't do that. That's that is one through nine. What why do we do? We can't just take the off the board. I was like, that is the safe place. That's the place to say, I know that I'm attractive, but I'm not trying to say that I'm Halle Berry. And he gonna take that from her. Mm-hmm. So she went all the way down to five, and he said, Rake yourself off your face. Why did she first of all? Why she said, Can you see me? Girl, 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 <laughs> why you do that to yourself? <laughs> why? Why? But in his, if his his rudeness is what's overwhelming. His what he's saying, however, unfortunately, is partially true. Like, dudes, don't be caring. His whole point, like I watched a lot of the video. His whole point was a lot of dudes don't care how much money you bring to the table. Uh, not dudes that have their own money. Yeah. Is what he was saying. If a dude is already making his own money, he don't care how much money you're bringing to the table. He cares about how you look and your age. Yep. And unfortunately, I have seen that be the case. But he didn't have to say it to her like that. He served that thing up like a hot pile of crap and tossed it at her face. <laughs> I, I just, you know, and there's some people who like, like, she was like, I'm such a fan of your show. So she already knew how rude he was. Yeah, so, yeah. That could have been a surprise. Right. So it's unfortunate that she would sub- subject herself to that type of abuse to get. I mean, my husband can be rude, but he ain't rude like that. Like, yeah. I would have to just pop. He was even like, oh, and Marcus don't be holding no punches. So it just, I just can't imagine having, I, I would have just, I wouldn't have been able to stay as calm as she was. I've been like, that's why you in a dark space by yourself. N word, yo, <laughs> old ass beating. Who you beating off with a stick? They're hookers. They're not women that are going after you because they're not getting paid for it. Oh my god. Anyway, oh my. Uh, god. My so- initial thoughts were, <clears throat> you know, to your point of her being aware of this show. I'm sure he didn't just adopt this personality. I'm sure this is what he's known for. Uh. I- I don't know why in the year our Lord and Savior 2020, you would let someone talk to you like that from a Zoom screen. Right. I mean, I'd have been, all right, all right. You ain't <laughs> I would not subject, listen, first of all, you yourself, okay, you got to think you're a 10. Yeah. As a person, the world don't think you're ugly. Okay, I know. <laughs> right. You know, but she was, she just say, you know, bless her heart, bless her, bless her. She mm-hmm. came out with, you know, like, you know, uh, on, well, let me back up because I know I'm not a 10. I know that about myself. OK, I'm a good father. <laughs> I'm hard. <laughs> I'm the, you got to know the truth about yourself. I wouldn't I don't think I'd ever come out and say I'm a five to my own self. You know, when the beard is freshly you know, groomed, I'd be like six point eight, you know, <laughs> I just I felt secondhand embarrassment on behalf of her because she she subjected herself to it. Yeah. You called in and let a man talk to you like that. Uh, I just I myself, I cannot imagine speaking to someone else that way. No, I, I can't just, you know, now, as far as what he was saying, the validity of his point. Do you well, feel like so? also said, and this is later on in the clip, she makes over a hundred grand. Right. Right? She's not poor, like or or but, broke. Yeah, but, no, but that was the point that he was she was saying because she makes so much money, she wants a man. Her whole point was I want a man that's making at least six figures. And he's like, she's like, because I make six figures. He was like, Don't know man with money care that much about how much money you bring the tape to the table if they're making a lot of money they want the maserati mm. they don't want the the souped up in his opinion this is not me trying to talk about her they don't want the souped up corolla they want the new maserati yeah and i think uh to his point men you know other men not me not joshy the rest of the world is subject to this 
men can be very superficial and probably yeah. if, they, if they are high earners will prefer you don't bring anything to the table yeah. because it can make them feel like more of a man. You know what I'm saying? Like you bring in a lot to the table and now what am I supposed to do? Like a lot of times, you know, high earning men, you know, millionaires, athletes, they're not going out and getting their equal in their field. You know right. what I mean? Like they often get, a, or, or I, I don't want to say get, I want to say go after mm -hmm. a woman that's j just pretty in the face. He's not wrong. I just, why you, why you said that to why you Why you say it? But like when we look at these older wealthy men, they don't go after women their age. They go after young women that be 20 years younger than them so they can seem like that they can keep up so they can seem like they just getting in that booty all the time using blue chew whenever they want to and let me tell you blue chew is sponsoring this episode all right okay so let's talk about something. he need it angel he gonna need that blue chew he need that blue chew and so does this man that's over here cutting down this woman i'm sure he be chewing on it just trumping because he's out here saying he gotta beat off these young women so he wants to have sex great great sex so guys if you if you won't get a young woman you better be increasing your performance and getting some extra confidence in bed all right now listen up bluechew.com that's like the color blue all right Blue brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Blue Chew is made in the USA. It's prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor or wait in line. It's even cheaper than a pharmacy, and they prepare and ship it right to you in a discreet package. No awkwardness, and you don't need to leave the house. Right now, we have a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free mm -hmm. with our promo code RR. Oh, just pay five dollar shipping again. That's B L U E chew.com promo code R R to try it free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. And remember, when you support our sponsors, you help make this podcast possible. So please be sure to use our promo code R R at bluechew.com. Um, should we listen to the rest or should we? We got it, we got it. I mean, he, he, she, I will say this is the part that, that we didn't put in there. She eventually was like, why are you being so mean? Like she, yeah. was, she finally, finally acknowledges the harshness in his voice instead of just like, oh, let me just ask you a question. And he was like, F you, I ain't being mean. He said, you broads get on my nerves, calling up in here, asking for, and you don't want to listen. You don't want to listen. Get the get the f off my show. He so, said he did say that. Oh yeah, he definitely. I I watched it. I said this baby. I hope she don't end up in no abusive relationship because this was something she could have easily got out of. Mm -hmm. She sat up on there. And that's the thing. I I don't. Here's the thing about shows like this. You have to generalize men and women, and you know, in order to make advice like this. Obviously. You know, um, there's people who are high earning who would be happy to have another woman who's high earning or has high earning potential. There's a man out there who won't think she's a five. Right. Um, if she, you know, she had a, a I feel like a, it was a pet grooming business that made over 100K. Yeah. Try to belittle that. Like, it's easy to have any business that generates profits of over 100K, regardless of what it does. Right. You know what right. And, uh, also, when you're 30 and up, it's highly unlikely that you don't have a child. Oh, highly. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's still, obviously there's people out there who are in the world, but you know, the closer you get to 40, the close, you know, Angel got four. Whole four. Four whole ones walking around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think, um, I, obviously this is probably his brand of stuff. You know, when I saw the rounds, the, the comments, depending on where this was posted, the comments were very different mm -hmm. on the page where I saw it. It was a whole bunch of dudes who follow him. And a lot of the comments were, yeah, man, you got to teach these women. OK, first of all, if you're not the high earning man that he's talking about, you hush because you ain't doing your part. either. That's what's always interesting to me. Men mm -hmm. always, like, women don't be talking like that. But are you the one earning six, seven figures or because what are you? What are you worried about this? She's not looking for you neither. No, okay, apparently, apparently. 
You over here like I need to get who who got me on a PS5? I got some peen in exchange for PS5. Okay, high earning men, they don't they don't got exchange peen for the PS5. They got it. They they can pay double retail. Okay, so while you commenting, you make sure that you the guy you're talking about, because the chances are if you got plenty of time to be here, you're likely not even the guy she was talking about. Okay, now when it was on women's pages, all the com the you know the comments were like, you know, sister, you ain't got to take this black queen, black queen, black queen, black queen. You know why do men talk to us like that? And I think that's all often the case of things on the internet. The way it's framed for you is how you uh, often interpret the information uh, that's given to you. And you know, based on the followers, it was it was star. So on World Star, it's going to be yeah, degrade women. Two mm -hmm. three, Jack. Most of the people I'd venture to say ninety eight percent, actually ninety nine point eight percent of the people who watch this on World Star. It's highly unlikely they are the six figure earning men. Highly. But this is this is the thing that it's upsetting though. But that is to his point. I've had many a ugly male friends. I'm talking about solid fives wanting to holler at my gorgeous television and film actress friends who like got, you know, 7% body fat at most. Bodies looking crazy. They're like, yo. I mean, is she still single though? And I'm like, nigga, in what universe are you qualified to think I got a steady job? You know, I'm this and this and that. But like, sir, so the fact that men are allowed to shoot for the stars when they not even in a rocket ship, they in a pinto. Like, where how you getting there? Not a pinto. She can't, she can't right. ask for her equal because she's not. That's the that's the part that's upsetting. It's not that she's asking for something above what right. she's doing. She right. didn't say, I need the dude who started uh, uh, like Amazon or Google, this billionaire, right? right? She's like somebody that is coming to the table equally as me. But the problem with a male dominated world is that money is only seen as the equal status uh, uh, equal status like type of uh, indicator when it comes to men to men. When yeah. it comes to men to women, they're like, okay, bump your money. How young are you? What does your body look like? Good point. How, how do you look on my arm? Not what have you accomplished? How are you going to actually sharpen me? How is iron going to sharpen iron they're just like no just polish me i don't you don't need to sharpen me just well, make you're me like a trophy i want to yeah the same way i have the maserati or the you know the audi or the mclaren and a lot of, and that the term trophy wife um comes from that i want to also have you on my arm because it's a status symbol your beauty your youth yes. your body is a is a virtue signal to other men look what right. i have Accumulated my because surely my looks have not you know got me this woman yeah it's gotta be my money or power so and maybe that's why like older celebrities I'm not gonna name names but like Diddy you know yeah. people like that fifty good good years with eighteen nineteen because it's it's a it's a I I still got it it's not that they're not looking for partners they're looking for possessions and that's the difference. That's the difference. They're not out here trying to get a partner. Because when you're out here trying to get a partner, you're going to want somebody 37 with a kid that can see the signals of, don't do this because you're going to mess up your business doing this. They want a possession, something that they can add to their collection of things to make them feel as though they the man. That, and yeah, that's my thing. Like he, he, he talked to her as if she didn't bring anything to the table when he knew she, she at least earned. Like that's the part that was like, okay, what he's saying about men is true. Uh, his feelings on her, her looks, whatever. That's you know, you know, whatever. However, it's not like she was just. He was talking to her as if she was a ugly gold digger who just had kids and no money and bad credit, and that wasn't you know. She had things that she brought to the table, and that's why I think relationships are kind of like buying a house. Everybody don't gotta like it. Just the person who's buying it mm -hmm. has to like it. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people, nope. I don't need the whole world to deal with me nor like me. 
Just I have one woman that's there. All right, man, come on. And I'd be like, I, I love you. I love you. Now, what he said to this man, man, in 47 seconds, whoo, somehow I feel like, yes, talk to him like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. Now, the dudes, yes, demean them. <laughs> to me, <laughs> Because the dude who called in was probably commenting on the video. Yeah, like talk to her like that. But sir, you're also fat with this. First of all, asking another man, do you have a big pee? Or I'm just, I, 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 I. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Perspective is, you know, size. Right. <laughs> you know, depending on the angle and the time of night. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you or don't you? He was like, on Wednesdays. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I was like, is this man a urologist? Why do you need to know the size of this man's penis? You know what? what? <laughs> I, I, I was like, is he a urologist? And the fact of the matter is, fat don't mean a thing, because there are women who love some extra pounds on a dude. No, come on. <laughs> We're not doing belly drums right now. Joshua. Joshua. Ah, man. No. And he got the good lights on. He got the good guys. <laughs> Hold on. This is <laughs> this is this is what he hold on. This is how he talked to this man. I, I need y'all to understand that it just clicked in my head where I heard this from. I know I've seen this man uh somewhere before, and it's right here. Just gonna share my screen. Everybody seen this? Okay. <laughs> okay. You don't see this? You see that? And you. We heard about you before you even got up here. But you have a chance. You need to be trying to get an education because your looks ain't gonna get you paid. Because you're not that cute. And your hair is uneven. You look dusty. So I'm saying, <laughs> what else are you gonna do besides candor? Rob still trying to trick some girl about her baby's chair or something. Okay, hold on. I want y'all to hear the dude in the background after he said, You look dusty. The dude in the background goes, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My whole girl just pointed out to me on Twitter. Listen, see if you can, you don't see him, but see if you can hear him say, Yes. Let's just watch it again because he came <laughs> angry and you with the glasses point. Okay, one more time. And you, we heard about you before you even got up here. But you have a chance, you need to be trying to get an education because your looks ain't going to get you paid. Because you're not that cute. And your hair is uneven. You look dusty. So I'm saying. Did you hear it? Yeah. 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 And then I will say, the, oh, go ahead, Josh, because you haven't talked. Go ahead, babe. Oh, no. That, I mean. This is just the clip. Honestly, no matter what context you look dusty, is just <laughs> always hilarious. Looking dusty, that's you're at your worst. At your worst. The way he looked when he said, "You look dusty." You look. I know. He was <laughs> genuinely concerned. Like it's it's not gonna get you back. You look dusty. I'm <laughs> telling you. To have the the have the uh, mitigated gall to be talking down to other inmates when y'all both in there together. <laughs> well, he, and also he's on trial for murder. So I know like, it says oh, it. No. Reginald murder <laughs> waiting trial. <laughs> hey, Reginald. So you know, you know, Reginald ain't about that game. I'll mm -hmm. kill you. I've done it before. I have done it before. Uh, Josh, you were so quiet doing that. Is that how you be talking to girls? Listen, I'm up at Big KOS Studio. So let you young. Absolutely not. I, you know what? It's it's interesting hearing that on a show with talking directly to a woman. I I could never. I if she was a strong woman, I would have been hit through the screen somehow. <laughs> I, 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 there's no way. There's. I'm just mad it took her that long to speak up. I don't know why she was trying to be respectful. Like I'm a fan of this show. No, that's out. I'm never watching this dumb little show again with your dumb little Lalabo candle. You don't got the big candle. You got the little one, the seventy five dollars. Don't be coming at me crazy. No shot. Josh, like let me let me break down your tech. You broke right. boy. Yeah, man. You ain't even right 
get you some gatos, El Gatos, okay? Yeah, because man. you are in the shadows, dark Not green. A up. whole order. A whole <laughs> order. You got an apartment. Your looks ain't going to get you paid. <laughs> you look dusty. You look dusty. Maybe it's Kevin, too, which made me sad. I was like, come on, man. We got a, we got a reputation for, for niceness. We got Kevin McAllister, Kevin Costner, Kevin Federline. He kind of took us down a little bit. Man, you got Kevin the the whatever he is, Kevin the the donkey. Kevin Samuel. Did I ever tell y'all I, I had pitched a script to uh a, a movie for Zay Zay and Jojo to the CEO of Austinist? Did I ever tell you about that? No. Hmm. Okay, I sent a script to him. Okay, or his uh, gave it to his assistant. Assistant gave it to him, and he never read it. Right, never read the script. Years later, I was like, "Hey, man, you know, did you 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 know?" I sent you a script. Did you read it? Did you read it? He was like, oh, that was you? Man, I thought that said Kevin Federline. I was like, why is Kevin Federline writing movies? I was like, hold on, you, you. He was like, no, nah, I never read it. And then I was like, are you going to read it now? He was like, hmm. He said, he said, listen, I, uh, I saw Kevin Federline and I wasn't going to gamble with whether or not that thing made sense. <laughs> he said, that I, listen, I done seen what he chooses. He was with Britney. He crazy. Uh, if I'm going to put my money down, I'm going to put it on something that makes some sense. He would have <laughs> put it down on you. Just like if you like to gamble, you might want to watch the World Series of Poker. Oh! Guys, have you ever watched the World Series of Poker on TV and dreams of being big like the pros? Yeah, the Central World Series of Poker app lets you play real-time poker with poker fans around the world and as close as the real deal as you can get without the $10,000 buy-in. That should have said dollar, but you get what I'm saying. I got you. Uh, do, have, do you gamble, Kev? Have you ever gambled? Uh, me and Melissa played craps on a casino uh, on a cruise one time, and me and Greg played blackjack in New Orleans at the at a Valley's. But mm -hmm. I had I never played poker, but I like watching it. I'd be like, yeah, man, I got a, I got a full deck. Full house. <laughs> we, uh, we had a poker like uh, situation here. Like we were learning how to play poker together. So it would just be four of us. So it wouldn't, the stakes weren't high because we knew we were still like, we were having to look at the rules. Mm. And, but one day I want to be real good. Smoke a, like a fake cigar. I want I want the visor with the glasses. Oh yeah, I never understood the glasses. I get it. It's not to show your eyes, but for me, when I was a kid, I was like, can't they just see the reflection of the card when they look down in the shiny glass? Anyway, keep going. And you know, I, I'm here for all of it, Josh. Let's have a poker game. Let's, let's have a poker night. Let's do it. Night. Night. <laughs> the World Series of Poker app is a great way to improve your poker skills, and it's free to download. Tired of social distancing? Now you can set up a virtual poker game with friends. And as the number one poker free poker game, World Series of Poker always has tons of players online um, to match up against whenever you want to play. Be on the lookout for all the crazy fun events coming up around the holidays, too. Best yeah. of all, you can get one million chips as a bonus gift when you yeah. join today. All right? So what's the hold up? What's the hold up? Hey -o. Download the World Series of Poker app in the App Store or the Apple App Store or on Google Play and Amazon now. And don't forget to use our promo code. Get ready, y'all. You're going to have to. This is a lot of letters, okay? Listen to it. W-S-O-P-S-K. Okay? It stands for World Series of Poker Stage Crew. Okay? W-S-O-P. Mm -hmm. You get it all in there for one million bonus chips when you sign up. That's one million bonus chips when you download the World Series of Poker app using the promo code WSOPSK. SK. And you know what? Sometimes when you gamble with your money, you that's fine, but you don't want to gamble with your legacy, and that's why you want to make sure your legacy is safe with legacy. <laughs> No. It's an affordable way to digitally preserve all your home movies and photographs that are currently trapped in dated formats like VHS or film. Mm -hmm. Look, Playmakers, Cam on Stage, we started before YouTube. We was just making videos on our, on our camcorder, and we would take out the VCR tape and place it in the VCR and watch them. And those early videos, I miss them so bad. And what I have to do, I don't have a VCR anymore, Angel. How can I watch them? I can't watch him. Mm -hmm. I can't watch him. However, mm -hmm. now with Legacy Box, 
I have found those old tapes, sent them in, and they have turned my old tapes into digital things that I can actually watch, send, and post. I was so surprised at how thin I looked because, man, I I was big then. I am big now. <laughs> their service couldn't be simpler. Use their kit to safely send moments you want preserved. Their team will create a digital archive by hand. Then you receive new copies stored on the cloud, thumb drive, <laughs> along with the original media you sent them. So for old people like Angel, you can go back into those times when we only had cameras mm-hmm. and let me box with your family to store and protect the most cherished memories. This is the best deal of the year. Go to legacybox.com slash RNR <laughs> to take advantage of this limited time offer and get 60% off. What? Exclusive offer won't last long. So order their kit now and send it in whenever you're ready. It's a sale to remember. Go to legacybox.com slash RR. 60% off while supplies last. Okay. okay. Moving on from Kevin Samuels to this and i want to ask the people as well as the panel there is a proposal okay that in order to get your stimulus check you have to take a 15 i mean you have to take the covid vaccine in order to get your stimulus check the 15 hond so josh angel and patreon stage crew watching live would you take the vaccine in exchange for the 15 horn Send me that link. You're taking it, Josh? Send me that link. Um, I, I make too much money to get a stimulus check because I work at uh, Kev on Stage Studio. So. Not, not the hair pack. I, I make too much money. They ain't going to send me no stimulus check. No way. Because I'm over here getting bands. You know what I'm saying? So, no. Fifteen hundred? No, I could just do a do a ad, another ad for Blue Chew and get the fifteen hundred without having to <laughs> take no. Back. Listen, another filter on. Look, okay, Patreon. We got people say no. Danielle, yeah, fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand. I might just have to, but not no fifteen hundred. Not for, okay. The, the stage crew is saying, nah, I ain't had a stimulus all year. I'll be good. Nah, right. so I'm gonna keep up. <laughs> Give me, yeah, give me closer to six figures or something. Then you shoot me up. This is about to be an experiment. Give me heroin for 15000 <laughs> I'm strong. I'm coming from a strong line of, of family. I can, I can. in here is, 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 is saying they are, are going to take it. You know, I just saw today while I was preparing for the show, they just started giving out the vaccine in the UK. I know they gave it to an old woman. She was the first one to get it. She was like ninety-one years old. I, okay, so I when I saw that, the, I, this is a dark joke, and I would never say this. I would never say this out loud. But when I saw that, I was like, okay, they're gonna give it to her and be like, if she don't make it, they'd be like, ah, well, <laughs> natural causes, ah. right? Exactly. They said, now you lived a good life so far. The fact you made it through the, this far of the pandemic, honey, come I on. Know. I felt bad because I felt like at one point she didn't know what was going on. She was looking around like, why are there cameras flashing? I don't, I thought, is this the insulin? I thought. Oh, she probably didn't. They tried to put all these quotes from her saying, I'm so excited to be uh, <clears throat> be selected to be uh, the first person. That She didn't say none of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see that meme where they're walking the old woman now? She was like, we used to watch movies and blockbusters. They're like, okay, Nana, that's that. <laughs> That's her. It's just a regular flu shot. Listen, Lena said, I'll take the vaccine if they get rid of my student loans. Listen, you ain't got to tell me twice. Hey, right there. Right there. They could come to me with the dog on vaccine could be smoking. And they're like, <laughs> but why is there smoke coming out? And I, I feel like there's already someone else's blood in there. I'd be that like, shoot it. right. I'd be like, shoot it in my booty. And then we got it. Just put it in my butt cheek. Just shoot it in my butt. And I'm good. Then I can I do it. Grab, I would have grabbed that vaccine. They took away student loans. I'll grab the vaccine. I would have tied one of those. <laughs> I got a good vein somewhere. I'm gonna find it. It might take me a couple pokes. <laughs> <laughs> How you take it? I've seen the wire. I know how to take it. And I've got I've got a heroin addict's uh, dream veins. My veins are huge. Oh man, what? I'm telling you, a drug. Why did anybody say that? 
Oh, I do. Like they don't ever have to. They're like, okay, let's find your. Oh, they're right there. I'm like, oh yeah, my veins is front and center, ready. Your veins are me. like drugs. We want to do them. <laughs> they just wide open highways, just waiting. Give it to us. Hair. I like how. <laughs> This is hair on. I love that old black hair on is hilarious. Hair on. The actual heroin's not funny, but that yeah, he on that hair on. That hair on. He on that horse. Listen, Ray Charles. Some of his best music was because of drugs. He was on that. He was on that horse. He was like, man, I'm coming up with great music. Y'all don't think the Gap Band wasn't on drugs when they made Uh, Outstanding? All of them. It worked. Man, that ruined my entire childhood and the thought of music making. I'm just like, man, these people were on real drugs at that time. They were on drugs. They were on drugs. Were. We're on drugs. All of them. That's why I'm mad Shaka Khan didn't teach Whitney how to do it right because Shaka did drugs too, but Shaka still got it. Yeah, Shaka did them drugs. I seen Shaka perform though. She don't perform like a recovering woman user. And I said she needed to teach these other divas that didn't make it out how to use their drugs. That's hilarious. Uh, <clears throat> did you know Shaka Khan played drums, Angel? Yes, I did. Oh, I didn't hey, did y'all know this? Mm-mm. Let me. I got this clip of Shaka Khan playing drums. I I've did not know seen it. I've probably seen it. Right. I love it. Okay, let me show the rest of y'all who ain't seen it. Mm. Uh, mm. Mm. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, here we go. Shaka Khan on drums, nineteen seventy four. about this as a former drummer myself i can tell you what she's doing is pretty difficult she's keeping time all four of her extremities are doing something different at a different mm-hmm. time so not only is she playing the bass drum with her right foot she's she's moving the hi-hat with her left foot and she's doing both hands at the same time she was out here i'm shaka she also she said something really mean to ariana grande the other day Oh well, she might have deserved it. Did, listen, there will be no. There will be no. Let me tell you something. I don't think y'all understand. If y'all know how much I love Beyonce, however, if there was, first of all, I don't even know how we continued the show without talking about how me and Beyonce's mama are best friends now. Oh, and, you didn't talk about it. I mean, because when Tina knows decides to repost your footage, okay, <laughs> on that's her, you, Angel. It's me. Okay, it's little Mar Mar. It's it's the slum lord. Beyonce saw that video. Oh, you know she saw it. She was like, Jay, look at this baby running into cabinets. Uh-huh. I I mean, it's it's I just came with it. Ah, oh. I forgot, Angel. I forgot you was famous. I'm famous now, but um imagine anyway. Angel, imagine if Beyonce's Finsta followed you because of that. You you, you you might be you might be in her feed right now. I feel it though. In I, her feed. Listen, I feel like I've been in her feed for a while, low key, because I feel as though she's constantly doing what I do just better. It, you know what I'm saying? She had, I had a child, then she had a child. Mm-hmm. I had twins, then she had twins. You know what I'm saying? I just feel as though. This, I feel your, as though. this your baby on Tina Lost Instagram still there? Yep. Having a blast. Do you hear me? He was having a good time. Yep. For <laughs> he was so proud of himself. Hi. <laughs> Look at the joy. Yep. That's what I felt like today, too. Yep. <laughs> oh, 
our kids are they are they are just he did that for a solid five minutes straight and did i just, really oh my goodness cracking up this boy and then what made it even funnier is that when i was editing that i put it in my vlog as well he was laughing watching the footage i said where'd you get that type of sense of humor that you can watch something and it'd be funny <laughs> I said, get out of town. But uh, what I was saying is, uh, and I digress, my love for Shaka, if they put me, if they said, Angel, you have the choice to spend either a day with Shaka Khan or a day with Beyonce, I would be torn. Really? Shaka Khan is my first love. I, you, you know, feel that strongly about Shaka? My, I used to want to be Shaka when I was five. I used to wear a red towel on my head because she used to wear red hair. My sister would pretend she was Whitney Houston and I would pretend like I was Shaka Khan. What, what I, is your favorite Shaka Khan song to sing? Uh, probably tell me tell me something good. Shaka's voice is, what, what I love about her is that you can't, like unless you have her voice, you can't imitate her voice. So I try not to sing too many of her songs because her voice low key is the best thing I've you know ever heard before. But I also love, she had this one song most people don't know called um, Love of a Lifetime. That was oh, my, love of a lifetime. my sister would request it on the radio every year for my birthday so I could hear it on the radio. I know the radio station would be like, why are we playing this song? Okay. Yeah. 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 How, did, how did that song go again? Love of a Lifetime? Yeah. Oh. Love of a Lifetime. <laughs> I am Shaka Khan. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Give <laughs> out the love of a lifetime. It's such a rock steady love, baby. She was just singing. I just, ugh. That's Shaka. your favorite Shaka Khan song? Yeah, I grew up loving it because it came out like when my memory started. Like when mm -hmm. I think of it, about so like. It just thinks, makes me think of the good pieces of my childhood, you know, being broke and not knowing you broke. Like, yeah. that, that's what that's it right there. Uh, Dr. Khan, I'm every woman when I was a kid, but I would always change it because I was toxic masculinity. I used to be like, I'm every woman's dream. It's all in. <laughs> I because I felt like I couldn't say man. I used to say I'm every man, man. But that just sounded weird. So I just yeah, I took that I took that dream in at the at the at the very end there. Just, is that does that is that it, what is that the type of music that makes you think of your childhood? Is it like Shaka Khan's? What music makes you just feel like ooh? Oh, um, gospel. Ooh. B B and C. I, that addictive love. That's my Shaka Khan. That's the oh, type wow. of Khan. I used to. In my mom or back in my mom or dad's or grandma's car, and it just made me feel all like I was a little boy listening to the music of the Hawkins and mm -hmm. you know, people like that. I listened to them, mm -hmm, I did that. That I, I agree. BB and CC they made me think of winter time, going to school, sitting in my mother's van with a nice, comfy sweater, like a, um, like those uh, Everlane sweaters. Have you have you felt those really comfy, like a comfy pair of jeans from Everlane or a comfy sweater from Everlane? Uh, it just fits just right. Everlane isn't making or m like most clothing brands, you know, it's just because they bypass traditional retail and markups. They partner with the world's most ethical factories to make quality clothing with radical, transparent prices. Sustainability is literally woven into every piece of fabric Everlane uses from natural fibers to recycled synthetics. You know, I love me some comfortable jeans. Listen, this Everlane hoodie is so comfortable. I was so lulled in. I thought you really just was asking me about my music. <laughs> Again, low key when this came in, I was like, oh, oh this, is a, this is a hoodie now. And I buy a lot of hoodies. I buy a lot. All the people I'm fans of, I buy their hoodies, I buy their merch. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's 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 regular hoodies mm -hmm. and there's Everlane. Now these Everlane things, I just took uh, threw one on to go to the grocery store yesterday, and this thing was so comfortable. I kept it on when I was at home and warm. I was just mm -hmm. like, let me just feel, see what it tastes like, see what mm -hmm. it feels like. Mm, mm. Yeah, and, and listen, a after having four kids, I don't like things to put on things that are not comfortable. Like right. I like to be cute, 
but you ain't about to have me uncomfortable for no reason. That's just not going, I'm not going to do it. And that's what I love about their products is that you're getting comfort. Mm. It's important to be comfortable in the holidays too. Ho oh, God, yeah. planned, God planned the holidays and hoodie season accordingly. He didn't mess up there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. And what's great is that Everlane fits into your everyday, you know, clothing outfits, you know, whatever you're already we wearing, it fits right into there. Yeah. Also, it's perfect for a gift. So if you're looking for a good gift idea, you need to go check out Everlane. So you choose your uh, stretch level. OK, you can do vintage style, rigid, original with uh, just a hint or uh, body hugging authentic stretch. You know what I'm saying? Let it stretch across all this tail. All right. Everlane's got the perfect sweatshirts, cardigans, sweaters, tees, and comfy footwear to make you feel cozy all season. Simple designs that complement your wardrobe. That's the word I was looking for before. I was like, what is that word that you call it? Wardrobe. Premium quality with a trans with a transparent, more affordable price. All made from certified organic cotton at the world's uh, what is that? At the world's cleanest denim factory with zero landfill waste. Mm -hmm. Go to everlane.com slash SK and sign up for 10% off your first order plus free shipping and get easy returns within 60 days of your ship date. That's 10% off your first order when you go to everlane.com slash SK. SK. Sign up. Mm, right. um, you're the reason I have trust issues. I sorry. I didn't know how long that Josh had already had that notification of going to the third, uh, not the third, the last ad. And I was like, we got to get there. I, I we just got to go. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Cool. Sorry. All right. Never knew. This is real, Angel and Joshua. Okay. Floyd Mayweather oh. fighting an exhibition against Logan Paul in real life. A YouTuber is fighting arguably one of the best pound for pound boxers in history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Logan Paul has Floyd by like, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds, something like that, and height. And the fact that a person who was on Vine in 2013, YouTube probably 2015, in 2021 is fighting not just a professional boxer. The boy, the. money Mayweather. Your thoughts? Men are stupid. That's my <laughs> thoughts. That's what it ends up becoming. I'm like, what is? Why? Why are we? Why are we doing this? This boy, while he can fight and he train, he is not a professional like Floyd Mayweather. And the problem is, unless Floyd pummels him. Like, like that. It's it's almost like when you think of the egos of it. It's like yeah. if Floyd doesn't pummel him, then Floyd looks stupid, right? Because you the one that's the professional, yeah. and if and if this little if this little white boy get a lick on him, then it's it's you know white boys up by a million points. If he gets a good punch on Floyd Mayweather, black dudes can no longer just think that being in the presence of other people is like you know, the thing that's going to make people not try, try them. They're going to be like, I can try all of y'all because sure. little white boy Logan just knocked out y'all's champ. He just hit y'all's champ at least. So I'm Maybe. like, it's not a good look. Logan Paul lost twice to KSI, who's just another YouTuber. Mm -mm. Just another YouTuber. He's 0-2 against a guy who just, like, I need you to understand, Floyd Mayweather has been boxing since he was like 16, 17 professionally. Mm -hmm. Now here's the other side of it. Floyd Mayweather is old. How old is he? I'm about to find out. 42? 43. Okay. He's 150 pounds. He's got what, three months? Yeah. Logan Paul is- His size. Floyd, uh, Logan Paul is 6'2", and he's 25 years old. And Floyd Mayweather is 5'8", and he's 43 years old. Oh, wow. Great for selling. like. But I need you to understand, the same way, right, like Nate Robinson didn't have as much boxing training as 
Jake Paul, who doesn't have a lot of boxing training. Mm -hmm. He's a former wrestler and he trained boxing for a couple of years. Logan Paul has about 30 years less boxing experience right. than right. Floyd Mayweather. Okay, right. so physically, Floyd is overmatched. Physically, you know, the things that usually matter in boxing, reach, uh, weight, and age are always yeah. important because they usually lead to power. However, one of the things that Floyd does really well, he is very hard to hit. Mm -hmm. He makes yeah. great boxers look pedestrian. Canelo, Canelo couldn't hit Floyd clean at all and then proceeded to beat up the next three people badly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's a money thing for Floyd because it's not like a sanctioned fight in that sense. It's not going to add to his record. Uh, but the amount, and here's the crazy thing, as a YouTuber and as a businessman, here's why HBO, not HBO, they got out the boxing game, but Showtime and pay-per-view these these fights are being sponsored by apps. The Logan Paul Nate Robinson fight was a tri was on Triller, which is interesting. What and the this, music video making app? Yeah. Huh? I said the music video making app. The music video making app, and low key, it was a pretty entertaining uh, fight. Even like the rap thing, like I Triller was like, we're about music. We don't care about. Three box, you know, the undercard of those fights usually have seven fights, you know, from six to eight. It's it's people you don't know about, you know, don't care about yet. Um, but they were like, how about a Wiz Khalifa performance and French Montana, which also I, I didn't I didn't care for those performances. But the, <laughs> idea was there. the idea was there. But Triller had Snoop. So this app is this fight is on an app called Fan. Fan meal, mm. fan meal mm. like that. And here's the smart thing they did, Josh. You can put this graphic up. It's in the thing, I think. This is what they did. If you buy the fight now, it's twenty four ninety nine. If you buy it uh, after a million or so, it goes up to thirty nine ninety nine. Starting December twenty ninth, either way, it's fifty nine ninety nine. And starting February eleventh, which is about nine days before the fight, it goes up to sixty nine ninety nine. So pricing wise, business oh, is like this is actually a great idea. That that part of it, and people are going to buy again. Floyd's the best thing that he ever did. People want to see him got, get knocked out. They want to see Logan Paul get knocked out. Whether the fight is good or not, bad, the best thing ever. The tickets already sold. I I'm all in. My son came and was like, Dad or father, father, did you see? Father, <laughs> I put this on my Instagram story. Isaiah was doing UFC fight. He created uh, Jake Paul, and he was fighting with Mike Tyson. He was beating up Jake Paul. That's how bad the children need to see something happen to the Paul brothers. Isaiah was like, "I'll take this into my own hands." So, Kev, who are we getting to fight on the Kev on Stage Studios app? Who are we doing? Who are we getting to fight? Yeah, we, yeah going, we, we got the room. We can put a ring in that spot. You can put a ring in there. You can put uh, uh little bleachers, have people social distance. So how what we do Baker and to hear more. Ja Rule and 50 Cent will probably sell crazy. Yeah, yeah. get them, book them, book them on cameo. Come on, can we book them on the cameo app? Just have them read the script and then we'll just have a whole marketing plan, whether they're doing it or not. It'll it'll make yeah, sense. I would I would. I would do that. I would. I would if I could find somebody who my like audience would want to see fight. If I could get this, and listen, I'm a businessman first. I'm Don King. You and Jonathan McReynolds, come on. I'm not fighting Jonathan McReynolds. Have you seen his muscles? I said he did a video after he worked out, so I said, okay, he'd be in the gym. That would be perfect. Oh, you trying to fight somebody? What you trying to fight a, a, a old deacon? You trying Jonathan to fight Karen Clark Sheard? What are you doing? I don't want to fight gospel stars. Oh, okay. So Reynolds is my height. He physically fit, and he's from the south side of Chicago. And he's a Mensa genius. So what if he was like, you, have you seen Sherlock Holmes when he was doing all the calculations of like jabbing yeah. the feet? What if he like saw my punch coming? He was like, okay, slow at 26% feet. And he just. What, are you trying to win? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, yeah. I'm only fighting somebody I could beat up. 
I would oh. fight Rudy Giuliani right now. <laughs> Let him recover from the vid. I would I fight. Say, fight COVID in the ring. We just will have a bunch of niggas cough in the ring. You got to go out there with no mask on. Yo, did you see Rudy Giuliani when he like wiped his nose into his handkerchief and then folded it the way he wiped it? No, I didn't see it. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see mm -hmm. it. Let me see if I can find this. this no. Coughed into his handkerchief and then wiped it with the doggone snot part. Man. Man. It was gross. That's what it sound like. Let me see if I can find it. Kevin, who can we get you to fight? I don't, I'm not really a fighter. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Here it is. All right, I got it, Angel. Yo, watch my man. Okay, here's here's here it is. Let me share my screen. I don't think I can watch. Can I? Have it? I'm gonna watch like this. This makes it easier. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm gonna turn the sound off because I think he cusses. Okay, boom. Watch this. Okay, handkerchief pull out. Okay. Blow my nose in it. <sighs> wipe, wipe. Fold it the way I just blew into it. Bro, I, you got to fold the right way. Not it really wipe my shit with, and then wipe. That's it. Bro, if there is literally a how to not get COVID, <laughs> what things to do if, if you don't want to get COVID, this is what <laughs> not to do. Not only did you secrete from your nose, you wiped your mouth, so you just ingested the COVID. And you want to your eye gunk out? You put more of the eye burgers of the COVID in there? No. They tell you not to touch your face. He literally took the COVID out and put it right back in. He touched what every office. What the, the thing is, not only did <laughs> it's not this that he folded it the wrong way. He literally put his hand <laughs> in where he sneezed. And talk, he said, talk values every day. <sighs> I was going to show people like me. <laughs> Call the police. Bro, I never understood the culture of handkerchiefs and reusable handkerchiefs. Me, me, me. Kevin, Kevin. when I was a kid, all the deacons had that. My dad used to use it. I was like, yo, what is wrong with you? Bro, they put the whole <laughs> put it right back in the pocket? Hell nah. It's so gross. Uh wait a minute. Hold on real quick. We ain't putting my husband in nobody's ring, okay? Y'all put y'all husband in the ring. <laughs> they said they said Tank and Goosby. My husband just recovering from a, a herniated disc. <laughs> First of all, Marcus is legitimately 6'4", and Greg is 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, mm -hmm. I'm like, don't know. Hey, no. How we getting older. This is how we getting older. She said, you ain't gonna put my husband there. He would come from a herniated disc. He don't want can't even get around like he. Don't you don't you do that to my listen now. He got to train for no listen because I'm the one who got to even if it even if he did win in a fight, even if he did, I still have to the nurses, whatever wounds he had, and I'm not I don't want to do it. No. Oh, man. There's enough uh content creators that ain't getting the brand deals they want that can get into the oh, ring. <laughs> the money. <laughs> He's like, you ain't getting no brand deals in the fourth quarter. Listen, we got a we got an idea for you. <laughs> oh my god. You gotta make it to the third round. Okay, moving on. Okay, this this is just okay. Tweets gone wrong over the last week. Okay, let's start with Cardi B, Belcalis Almanzar. She tweeted the other day: should I spend 88k for this purse? <laughs> OMG. It's tempting. She was immediately drug on Twitter. You know, as you can imagine, people were like, girl, we're in a whole panoramic. Right. How are you going to tweet about a purse that is literally more money than most people make in two or three years, much less right now? You're going to purchase it as, a, as an item. Her point was, I'm rich, and it's an investment. Apparently, and I did not know this. Let me tell you, I don't know I'm rich people's problem. Apparently, pur purses can appreciate in value. Yeah. I did not know this. 
I'm, I, I didn't mean to do my, my, this is not a Rolex. I just, for what reference, let me just be clear. <laughs> so Cardi, Cardi B made the fatal mistake because she also was like, yo, like, why are y'all tripping? I just donated a million dollars for coronavirus relief back in April. And then after that, she gave out apparently like $2 million on Cash App. And Cardi thought because she did that, that people would forget that they were broke or doing okay and <clears throat> not as rich as her. Yeah. She was drugged handsomely on the internet. Your thoughts, Angel and Joshi? It sounds like Cardi B. Like, I don't, what do people expect? This woman be, ha had a full blown birthday party, sold out, got a, a whole new her um, baby daddy. Got her a whole new car that she probably ain't ever going to drive. That right. somebody else going to drive. Right. Like, so if uh, maybe it's because she tweeted it that they're like, you could have kept that to yourself. But we have seen her spending habits whenever she is on the gram. She's got about 60,000 on her body, at least from head to toe. Always. Always. And I'm not including whatever purse she might have on. So, like, I don't know what the expectation, like, you know, I'm a person. I'm going to let you be who you show me you are. I'm not going to all of a sudden get like amnesia and be like, you did what? When that's what you've been doing. We've been in this. Listen, she has not changed. I, Cardi B was getting her nails and her uh, wigs glued on all doing. What you call it, Kev? Did you call it the panoramic? I think you said panoramic. all doing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm like, I mean, is it the way it, yes. Could she use some decorum and I put it online? Yes, but there's a, she never uses decorum. Right. <laughs> that's not really her whole thing. I think it, that's actually a great point, Angel. I think it's, well, people were upset because they were, it was like, why are you asking us? And she was like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my fans. Like, girl, this is a whole public Twitter though. There's more people on, on Twitter mm -hmm. than you. Man, this ain't a Patreon, Cardi. This is the world. This is the world, right? Um, I can see that. Yeah, I think what happens is we say celebrities are out of touch, but then we are often so interested in their business that we pry, and then when they make our business public or make their business public, we be like, "Well, shoot, y'all rich like that?" Like, listen, the thought of spending eighty-eight thousand dollars on a purse, she thought of it like, "Ugh." Should I get Mexican or a Philly cheesesteak? Like it ain't, it wasn't a question of do I have the money or not? Mm -hmm. And I was wondering like, what's the amount of money that would be okay for her to say $8,000 purse, $18,000? Was it the price tag? Was it, if, if this was three years ago, you think people would have cared that much? Is it, is it, it because it's a purse? Huh? Is it because it's a purse? Cause I don't, I mean, rappers buy cars every day in ex with money they don't have. Talk right. about it, Josh. So, I mean, I, my, my thing is, bro, and it's her money. Like, of course she's rich. She's just talking about it. Like, that's. She does this in, to Angel's point, she does this in song every day. That's oh. what rappers, they brag about their richness. Her, her biggest song, Bodak Yellow, when it popped off, was about red bottoms. Like, what do you. She, she bragged know. about dental work, which I love. Her yeah. as her come up came up, her her brags were relative to where she was. Not a bag and fix my teeth. First of yeah. all, I, to work. I, I had to have that. <laughs> and she said, I'm gonna get both pairs of shoes because I don't want to choose. Okay, you right. said I don't want to choose. I don't know. I think I don't, it's just surprising. It'd be different if it was Miss Michelle Obama on there talking about y'all. I'm thinking about to get this 88,000. <laughs> Dollar Birkin bag, and then I'd be like, Michelle, this is not necessary, girl. Don't do this. But Cardi is not a Michelle, she's no. not. And I think that's a great point, Angel. I feel like, and, and this is going to go to our next thought JT, City Girl JT, someone dug up her old tweets. <laughs> oh, Lord. Here's the thing we get mad if a person is an industry plant if we think they're fake, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> then when a real person blows up for being real, we want them to change into the thing that we say we don't like. Like, that's right. what happened with Tiffany Haddish. Like, Tiffany didn't change. People's perspective of her 
changed. What we loved about her, and I, I loved her both times, but what people loved about her prior to Girls Trip or right on that press run, that was all of a sudden too ghetto, too loud, too this. And it's like, bro, Tiffany being herself. And, her and I met Tiffany back in All Death. We actually tried to get her in All Death, but she was on the Carmichael show and it was like, Come on, you know, it was I couldn't ask her for, to do something for 150 when I knew she was on TV like that. But she wasn't like she wasn't even tripping. She was like, I, I would love to do it, but I, you know, we shoot a lot, like the schedule is crazy for, for this. Mm -hmm. So, but she was relatively the same person then as she was at the end of the Carmichael show when Girl Strip came out. Now that she's on like acting and drama dramas as well, like she hasn't changed. It's just that we somehow people get so big, we we want them to be different than what we love them for. We want them to be all of a sudden these examples of what we should do in society when the money did not change their, their decision-making. It just changed their budget. You yeah. Know I mean? Like, it's crazy to me. I don't know if people just think that money all of a sudden becomes the refiner. Right. I am still, yeah. when I start making my millions, which are on the way, it's coming. I'm still going to be twerking. <laughs> People will always tell what they would do with somebody else's money, too. Yeah. Oh, and here's what, and this is just my personal opinion, right? This is my personal opinion. I, I don't need, I don't want y'all to co-sign if you don't agree. The Kim Kardashian, I got my whole family tested for COVID and flew to an island. I venture to say 90% of people who had the means to do that would have done that. Now, mm -hmm. would they put that online? Maybe not. But people were acting like they would not have done that. And I'm like, y'all are lying. Man. If you had enough money to get privately tested and quarantined and fly a private, all your friends and family to some remote island and spend a week there during a pandemic, you wouldn't do that? <laughs> going you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't go to Hawaii if you could. I would go Hawaii right now. Bro, and the oh. thing is, the thing is, they can't just go to Hawaii. They can't just go to Tulum because right. they have to go to a private island because their lifestyle would attract so much attention of just their presence being out of place. Like it doesn't right. They have I, to they have to travel like that. Go ahead. I, I truly think the only thing that I disliked about Kim Kardashian's statement was, I feel so humbled and blessed That's to be able that my life has afforded me to do all these things. I'm like, just go ahead and stunt. I can appreciate you doing what you're doing if you just do it. Don't mm -hmm. put it under the right. guise of something else. Don't put it under the guise of, you know, the humility that this brings me. No, Heffa, you're stunting on us. <laughs> And that. That's fine. You have the ability to because once I have the ability to, don't at me if you want to. I won't even tell you don't at me. Go ahead and at me. But I'm gonna be done. So that's Cardi being Cardi. And I, I I I let me tell you what I'm doing right now. I'm watching, I'm learning, I'm seeing how people change, and I know a lot of it is what you can't control, but let me tell you what the Maserati probably the last thing I ever show and that was really because the people who've been rocking with me uh you know you know it was more of a big leap thing for my audience but now i'm like hmm mm -hmm. i have close friends in real life i've got group chats i've got friends of similar lifestyle uh or friends who just would be happy for me i got patreon and i'll still share stuff within the patreon you know what i'm saying but as far as publicly Y'all ain't finna drag me. I listen and this now. I'm seeing why celebrities become increasingly more and more private. Yes, bro. You use what you love me for. Go ahead, Joshy. I was gonna say, man, once you get to the point where when you start doing stuff, not necessarily at the crib, but when you start doing events and, and the production team or crew has to sign NDAs just to be there to yeah. not speak on anything, not necessarily anything that happens there, but just like for defamation purposes or anything like that. They literally have to do that to protect themselves. Like, yeah, take a privacy. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro. When you know, people in the Patreon are like, like that new house. What new house? No, I didn't move. What? Yeah. What you talking about? What you talking about? Did I finally get a chance to buy a house in LA after I thought I never would be able to? No. In a pandemic. In a Absolutely pandemic. Not. 
Absolutely not. Why would I do that? I wouldn't. I didn't. I never. I didn't. I said. I didn't. I said nothing of the kind. Mm-hmm. Now, if you see a video, you notice that a kitchen is new. I could be on set more than I can have on set. Okay, I'm not. Ain't no new house tour. Yeah. What? We're, we're not shooting in the house to ensure it's a write-off. That doesn't make any sense. No. Josh, are you crazy? My accountant would never. No. Now, Cardi B's 88K tweet was one thing. Okay, now Patreon, I'm going to put this link to the article because for JT's tweets, I don't even want to say them out loud. JT is off. <laughs> the, she has lost her mind. <laughs> let me tell you. Hold on, I just put it in there, but let me switch my YouTube account so that I can pin it because, whoo! Whoo! I mean, the stuff that this baby girl was saying, I Listen. said, oh, why are we coming out the block so hard? This is the thing that JT did. All right, I got it pinned. <laughs> the only thing she did that was smart, she tweeted so recklessly to everyone, not one individual group can be mad. Oh, she was going. This was her control verse. Josh. <laughs> she was going off. She also, I mean, listen, this is the, the, the terrible part about the internet. <laughs> the girl's tweets were hilarious. Some of those I would never share publicly which ones I laughed at or something. But here's what happens. You take regular people who in 2013 JT was working a regular job. She did not know, even if she was dreaming of blowing up and being as popular as the city girls currently are, you never know at the moment you are tweeting this, seven, eight years later, you are going to be so famous that on a random day, somebody goes through all your old tweets and finds every problematic, toxic thing uh, that you said and then makes a thread of them just on a random Thursday. Also, as an artist of her size, your team has got to go through and tell you to scrub. No lie, guys, I kid you not. While we were talking, I downloaded all my tweets ever. Like I said, there's a way on Twitter to go through everything you tweeted and download it. I'm gonna go through and read every tweet and see what's problematic. Now I'm gonna tell you guys right now, you might find a tweet in mine that you might not be happy with. And I'm gonna tell you why. 2013, 14, language, thoughts, the way I am as a person now and the person I was then have changed, okay? So I'm not above saying there's some stuff that I probably wouldn't tweet today and probably aren't proud of. But I asked my audience multiple times, go through and, and, and search my name and, and see if there's anything I need to delete that I still have tweeted, you know, because. Jesus, I, I got. I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere. Listen, I pro- tweeted one thing problematic. I stand by it, but I did erase it. <laughs> <laughs> this dude had said something real foul about this show that I had posted. He was like, "Nah, it's not that great." And I went and looked at his profile picture, and I dragged his fat tail all through. He was like, this type of show hurts my feelings. And I was like, and your weight probably hurts your ankles. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then he going to be like, oh, you're really going to pick on someone disabled? I was like, hi, I'm supposed to know you disabled. <laughs> I can't tell you. I don't know that you in a chair, <laughs> sir. A chair? Yeah. Angel, what is wrong with you, man? This girl said, how am I supposed to know? She gets even more mad because she's like, you didn't even tell me you're in a chair, so I, how am I supposed to know you don't use your ankles? And listen, you shot fire. You shot. You shot first. So when shots are fired back at you, I didn't you know. Play. These strays are going to hit. I don't care what they hit. They're going to hit. Listen, shot him all up in that thick neck. Oh. But... <laughs> I did take it down because it fell off brand for me in that sense. I lost a couple of followers. I was I was like, I was going in strong at like 10,000 and it dropped down to nine something. And I was just like, it's because I talked about that man. But he shouldn't have been that way. And I said, okay. I think that's the only problematic because you know I don't be on Twitter. But I was on Twitter that day. 
<laughs> I had time today, cuz. I said, oh, how many characters I get to talk about you? Because I'm using all of them today, oh. player. Angel said, I got 140 in the clip. Bow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Here's the thing. People always get mad at celebrities or people with large followings for responding to that type of hate, but they don't understand what it's like to get hated every day, all day on multiple platforms, regardless of what you do or post. It is an, And some days you just snap. Yeah. I have been training myself not to respond, but I had time plenty of times. What I usually do is I go off on people, like I mean, and say everything in my heart is heart of hearts. And then I delete it and I'd be like, ah, I said it. You just didn't see it. <laughs> Those drafts are probably serious, though. Oh, man. I don't even post. I just I just let it go, John. Because I said, man, what you talking? Angel, what are you eating, girl? You are having the snack of your life. I'm sorry, because I'm getting oh, my man. blood sugar's getting low, y'all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what are you I'm eating? Because like? you're eating it so smallly. Because I'm trying not to be like too um loud with it you know i'm trying to be real delicate seaweed i need my ww tortilla chips they're so delicious and they're only two points you better plug ww come on partner you know we we uh they renewed my contract i'm still a partner hey, hey. Benda. yeah but no sorry i really was getting a little weak over here i was like i should have been loud you taking you taking these fake bites you I thought you were eating sunflower seed. Were you breaking yep. the up? I've been just doing that because I've been trying not to be like. Okay, just okay. you shoving okay. sharp shards. Okay. I'm going to talk to Josh. You go get some chips in. Go and get you some chips Angel in. Angel just shoving little shards of chips up in her lip so she can suck on them for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> like, I said, get you a little chip in, Angel. You're going to finish <laughs> back one way or another. You're eating chips like sunflower. I know. I thought it was little seaweed. I told that girl, seaweed. Seaweed. that's small. <laughs> Angel, what are you eating? Angel is hilarious. Uh, are you good, Angel? You need no. to come. See her chew it? You still still don't ask if she's good. She'll she'll knock. She'll do something. <laughs> oh, Josh, how long it's gonna be for you to be in the new house? Good and, and all the way moved in. I'm sleeping here tonight, man. I was mad. My bed set needs a a, a box spring, so I tried to put the mattress on it. I almost broke the whole bed set. I was, it was, it was bed? yeah. So um, I got to pick up the. I didn't understand, man. They're like, yeah, uh, you can pick it up from here. It'll get delivered Wednesday, or we could deliver it to your house on Sunday. I was like, bro, can't the truck driver just drop it here on the way to the store? I don't, I don't get it. So. I'm gonna sleep on that bed on the floor today, though, because my my this work. Is your first day. This is your first night tonight. Yeah, I think so. You came uh, up this morning. I You're back. I'm back. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited for you, Josh. Go ahead. Yeah, I was really waiting. This desk, I moved it in at like six thirty. So, because the Wi-Fi took way too long, they give you a window, right? One to five. That was my window yesterday, which is already. You can't complain because I had to book it out a week and a half because they're like, oh, that's the first day a technician come out. Whatever, man. They came at five o'clock, bro. I was sitting here for four hours. That's no the worst. So I cooked the rest of the moving stuff that I was trying to do yesterday, but you know, we're here. I am so proud of you, homeowner. Thank you, thank you. Is, what you need for your place? What else you still need? Tools. Oh, that's that, that's already the tank sleeves are getting you that. Oh, snap. I want to oh. buy you something. Melissa already bought you something, but she Melissa buys you practical items. And I was like, I want to get you something. She was like, why do you need to get him something? Why can't we get him what I got him? I want Liz to get in her like home decor bag and then just go crazy here. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll oh, yeah, she I'll will. She, will. Sure uh, about she can help me pick out stuff for, for the set. Cause like, I feel like I, I got the basics, but to kind of like make it my own to, yeah. to make it my vibe. A little musty. Bachelor pad with your TV on the floor and just a your dad's old love seat and a, a bowl. Like, come on, Josh, have a man. little place to take a nice lady home. Yeah, man. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I can't wait to see how it all comes together. I told Liz that she's gonna. Uh, we get ready to put our our house up on the market and move. I told Liz that she's got to decorate our new place. She was like, "What's your aesthetic?" I was like, "Whatever you choose, girl. Just go ahead." Go ahead, have a, have a blast. 
All right. Well, we love you guys. Uh, please make sure to get your tickets to Keep Your Distance Comedy this Friday. Uh, just for the record, next week uh, is the last new episode of Here's the Thing for this year. Uh, we're going on low power mode uh, from the 15th through uh, the new year. Um, Kevin on Stage Studios, all low power mode. So, which usually means we have to have to do thing. We have to work harder just so we can take a couple of days off. So, last new episode of this year will be uh, next week. The last two episodes of the year will be a combination of top ten stuff, never before seen, best of the bonus episodes you missed on Patreon. I don't know. Josh is going to get creative, and me and Angel just going to record the ads. Uh, so, make sure you rock with us on Thing Patreon. I'll see you a little bit later when we do the Love Hour, and we'll see you guys on Friday for the bonus episode. Uh, please, if you don't mind. Buy a ticket to this Keep Your Distance comedy to help this studio. You know, we built this, we bought this, and it still needs a lot of work uh, to become a sound stage because it's not a sound stage. I mean, it is a sound stage, but it has to be outfitted like a sound stage. Right. So if you never went to Keep Your Distance, please check out this one. It's also going to be a great show. I have a lot of amazing comedians on there who I've been trying to book, and actually, the stars align for the last show of the year. Can we um, do? A, can we do like a sound stage promo code? That's a good idea. I don't know. I just thought of it. We should have announced, had that set up to announce it for this episode. Oh, later in the process, but, but it's a, it was a good idea. <laughs> anyway, love you guys. See you later for Patre uh, Patreon, and the rest of y'all will see you next week. Bye bye. 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 There's another bang of fire. There's another one. There's another bang of fire. There's another one. There's another bang of fire. 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 With my boy Kevin Stay. And that chick angel.